This is a 2009 Dodge Grand Caravan. It has the Rolex Type S conversion on it, uh, which includes the silver racing stripes as well as the hood scoops, which are there just for looks. And then of course there's the Type S insignia on the side. The rims are all painted black, which of course is easily removable if that's not something that you like. And then you can look at the paint on this and tell that it is absolutely in pristine condition. Like I said, it is a Rolex, as evidenced by the sticker in the window. Right along the paint for the racing stripes on the hood, there's a little bit of bubbling here and here. And that is the only rust on the entire vehicle. This fog light right here is cracked, but its functionality is unaffected. The one on the passenger side is in pretty good shape. So other than those few issues, there are no other body imperfections. There is a little bit of a dent. I doubt you can see it on the camera, but you can tell on just the reflection that there's just a little bit of a dent in the cider over here. It is not very noticeable at all though. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the interior. As you can see, it is very, very clean. Uh, the vehicle has pretty much power everything from power windows, power mirrors, power locks, power driver's seat. Which is nice for whoever's driving the vehicle. It's even got power pedals where you can position them wherever you want to. Cruise control, which does work. Vehicle only has a hair under 44,000 miles, so very low miles. It will have quite a bit of life left in it. Um, these vehicles will go well into 200,000 miles. Aftermarket radio, which is hooked to a pair of subwoofers, which I'll show you in a little bit here. There's the climate control center. And then uh, this mirror um, is actually the backup camera as well. It's hard to tell because the mirror is reflective as well. But you can see the backup pack camera come on whenever you throw in the reverse. The vehicle fired right up for us. It's in excellent running condition. So absolutely no engine issues, no transmission issues whatsoever. Maintenance has been done on a regular basis. So there's the motor. It's the 3.8 liter V6. The only modification on it is the cold air intake, which is right there and it absolutely runs like a top. I don't see
see a date on the battery, so I don't know how much life is on that one, but... It works great in the winter, though. Even with the power cord for the sound system that you've got in the back. The other thing I want to show off here is the exhaust system. This was professionally installed by uh, a local exhaust specialist. The really cool thing about these is they have a baffle installed in them which is electronically controlled by this fob right here and you can open it up for the moments where you want to run loud and then when you want to hide the fact that you have an exhaust installed on your vehicle from the cops you go ahead and shut it so I usually open it just a little bit it's right about there so it's not open all the way but it still has a nice sound to it just a little bit higher pitch The other thing I should show you is where the backup camera is installed. It's mounted right here. Alright, I'm going to show you how the ramp works now. It's a really uh, cool system. There's a fob on the keyring that you can use to open and shut the, the ramp. Um, there's also separate buttons throughout the entire vehicle that you can use to do it, but this is the easiest. Just press the button, and it's all automatic. The door opens, the ramp comes down. At the same time, you can see the van kneels slightly. And what that does is it gives a lower incline on the ramp. So here's the back of the vehicle. Right here is a space where an occupant and a chair can sit. There are anchor points pretty much anywhere you can think of in order to uh, tie down a chair in the back here. This vehicle comes with um, the Sherlock's. There are four of these and they are the simplest things in the world to operate. So you can use any one of these anchor points. There's one here, one here, another one here, one here, and one here. And then there's um, ones up along the front of the vehicle as well. So um, anybody who's in a chair can occupy one of three spots. It can be in the driver's seat, which is removable, the passenger seat, which is removable, or just occupy the uh, middle aspect of the vehicle. And then there's, of course, seating in the rear for any other passengers. So here's the passenger side seat in the front, and I'm sitting just behind it. Uh, there is a quick release system. You can just flip up that. Right there. And there's a lever right here. So you pull it until it's in a down position and the seat is now free. And so you can lift it up and it rolls out on these wheels right here. So it is fairly easy to remove when necessary. The driver's side seat has the same system. So we'll push that all the way back forward to lock it into position and then give it a good shake to make sure it's seated properly. So the only issue really in doing that is making sure that it's lined up perfectly, which is kind of annoying, but it, in the end it does not take that long at all. So this is the view you'd get from running in the back. There are quite a bit of compartments up here. Um, this rear one likes to fall down frequently. I've got them taped up right now just to minimize that. So the mat may be just a little bit dirty 
but it's there to protect the carpet underneath which is pretty much like new but it's something that's easily cleaned up the other thing I should show you is uh, the speakers in here there's no way for me to actually show these without taking this cover off um, are replaced with Sony Explodes so there's a pair of Sony Explode 6x9s just for the rear speakers you can kind of see through the mesh on this side but that's definitely a custom speaker in there well the other thing I was going to mention is there's an LED strip along the ceiling right underneath there so the entire cargo compartment actually lights up and illuminates the ceiling which indirectly lights the cab back when the interior lights are on. <laughs> Go ahead and close this up. The ramp will go up. And the van will also come out of its kneeling position and the door shuts automatically. There is a switch inside the vehicle, so if you're exiting the van like onto a curb, put the ramp onto like a curb, and you don't want the van to kneel, you can always disable that function. Actually, let me go ahead and show that to you. The button on top is just another control button to raise and lower that ramp but this switch just below that will turn the kneeling system on and off. And so the van will not lower if that is switched downward to the off position. Currently it's on because most frequently uh, it's being used to unload the occupant onto a flat surface rather than onto, say, a curb. So I'm going to go ahead and pop the tailgate here. This one has a button on the fob. Press it twice. Opens automatically for you. And then you can see the custom subwoofers that have been installed on here. This is a 1500 watt system with a pair of kicker 12 inch subwoofers. And it really pushes the base uh, especially with that ported box in there it has a really good uh, sound it just resonates and pounds like my one's business there's a button right here it's actually one of two buttons in back here this is for the tailgate there's another button right here that's another one for the ramp but in order to close the tailgate Press it. And if it, there was anybody in the way while it was shutting, it would actually stop and open back up again. So there's safety features to prevent anybody from getting hurt if they happen to be in the way. The gas tank is underneath here and it's protected by that metal, that steel plate in the back there. So if the vehicle were ever to be rear-ended uh, the gas tank is protected this is a new safety feature on the newer Rolex vehicles the older ones do not have that feature and because of it they tended to fail uh, the crash tests at least the rear impact ones and then the aftermarket stereo has got the auxiliary port on there which I've got it set to and uh, I'm running it through my phone right now. But I've got a song queued up that should um, illustrate just how well the bass works. One time for the city. My city. Bitch up from the. So 
that's a brief illustration of just how well the subwoofers work in this vehicle. They sound really good. Looks like the overhead compartment popped open again. That was from the rattling from the subwoofers that I just showed you. We'll go ahead and shut that. This door right here. Um, it's supposed to be automatic. And you're supposed to be able to pull on that handle and it opens up automatically. You could hear it trying to do it, but I think it's that cable right there, or something to do with the system underneath the door has failed at some point in time. As I understand it, it's a common problem with Dodges and their doors that they do tend to fail, at least automatic function. The door does still function normally. You can open and shut it. It just won't open automatically anymore. Then of course, uh, I just wanted to show that this uh, door does function. Like you do not have to operate the ramp in order to open this door up. This is how the driver's side door is supposed to work, but... Like I said, that side's broken. Uh, I'd probably take a trip into the dealership to fix it. I don't think it would take them too long, but it's just something that's never been necessary. All right, you want to load up? Yep. Okay, it's done. <laughs> fell down again, didn't it? All right, we'll get into position like he normally does. And then we'll go ahead and grab one of the Sherlock's. And they are so easy to, um, to operate. And there's the anchor point right there. So you put it in so it's even and you slide it to the side. And this little tab right here will drop in position. And it will not come out unless you lift that tab. And, so, and then there's the red button right there. You just press that down and pull on that um, strap right there. And it'll come right out. So, just easy as that. And so this end will hook into his chair right there. There's a hook, or a place for his hook right there. And then you just press the red button. The thing will tighten up. And then you just give the knob a couple good turns. And then make sure it's tight. And you'll do that for all four corners. So there's an anchor spot back there. There's another one right there that I'll use. And then if I come around, there's another one right back there that I'll use. So I won't go through anchoring them all down. But if you think about how quick that one was, literally you can have a passenger strapped down in less than two minutes if you've got some decent practice in using them, they're just that easy. And you did it one-handed. Yeah, and that was one-handed. That was hard. If you've got two hands, it'll be easy mode. So there you have it. I can burn my head on the exhaust on the way out too. <laughs>